Hello, all you big, beautiful brains out there. Today, we're going to talk about your memory. Before we get started, take a minute to subscribe to Psy vs. Psy. Help out your friendly neighborhood psychologist while I tell you all about the stages we go through to get something into your memory. Before we start on those stages, I should probably say what exactly memory is. Memory is learning that persists over time. Memory and learning are really related and almost overlap in a lot of areas. Psychologists have broken down the process of making a memory into three stages based on observable problems that accompany each of those stages. Basically, we know where the stages are by figuring out the problems people have when they're making memories. Today, we're going to look at each of those stages and explain what can go wrong in each one. The first stage is called encoding. Encoding is when we change information to a form that our brain can process. So taking it from a sensory experience to electricity and chemicals in our brain. It's actually a lot like what we typically think of as learning. And there are a lot of different ways to encode memories. You can encode with sounds or words or visually by touch or even by smell. We can have what is called encoding failure for lots of different reasons like trauma or substance abuse, but it all ends up boiling down to the same thing. When you haven't learned something, you can't encode it. Basically, we can't remember what we haven't learned. The next stage is storage. Storage as in keeping or holding on to things. Your brain isn't like a big file cabinet. We separate storage even further into two categories based on capacity and duration. The categories are called short-term and long-term memory. And don't worry, there's a video coming about those two. We can identify when we're experiencing storage failure because of behavioral tasks about asking people about their memories. Sometimes people can remember a certain story or an experience the first time they're asked, but if you ask them again, three months, six months, a year later, they can't remember. We can be pretty sure that's a storage issue and not an encoding issue. They knew it before, they just didn't retain that memory as the amount of time since forming that memory increased. This is commonly accepted to be due to something called decay theory. Decay theory is more or less forgetting. You used to be able to remember something, but the longer the time period elapsed, you just can't remember anymore. The last stage is called retrieval. That's when we pull the information we need back out of storage. And there are three ways that we retrieve information. Well, that we know about so far. The first is recall. Recall is when you can remember information without any other cues. If it was a test, it'd be a fill in the blank. The second is recognition. And recognition is when we can remember after seeing something again. If this one was a test, it'd be like a multiple choice. You might not necessarily be able to remember the answer independently the way you could with a recall, but once you see the information again, it kind of triggers that memory. The third is called relearning. That's when you go back and learn something again. You actually learn it much faster the second time. But just like we can have encoding failure or storage failure, we can also have retrieval failure. The most common explanation for something being in your memory but you not being able to retrieve it is because of interference theory. Interference theory suggests that things do stay in our memory but that other things just get in the way. And it can happen in two ways. In proactive interference, we are so good at remembering old information that we can't remember new information. If you've ever moved and then accidentally given out your old address or have changed phones but accidentally given someone the wrong number, then you know exactly what proactive interference feels like. The opposite is called retroactive interference. And that's when new information gets in the way of remembering old information like only being able to remember your most recent password or the newest logo from a brand that you like. If you want to get started storing more things in your brain, make sure you subscribe to Psy vs. Psy so you can get all of our other videos and you can learn all about the science of psychology. Until next time, keep thinking and I'll see y'all later. Bye!